You know, the funny and interesting thing is after watching this movie, now I'm like, huh, I kind of want to watch a documentary about bees because I'm curious. And welcome to my safe Gaven, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another video here on the Black Gay Comic Geek channel and joining me for another year here on the Black Gay Comic Geek channel. If this is your first time checking out my channel, hey, how's it going? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Michael. This is my assistant for today, Storm Aurora Monroe. She's holding my microphone. And I call myself the Black Gay Comic Geek and I always say the things that I love to talk about on my channel has blood, sex, gore, and magic, or any variation of the four. So I generally like to talk about nerd stuff, superheroes, comic books, fantasy. And of course, I like to talk about black representation and queer representation, a lot of times the lack thereof in these sci-fi fantasy properties. So if that's something that you're interested in, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, become one of my safe gaveneers, follow me here on YouTube, but I also, not only on YouTube, I also talk on other platforms like TikTok, Instagram, X, which Twitter, uh... What else? Uh, threads, all of it. Follow me across all social media channels and hit the like button on this video. It'll help with the YouTube algorithm. Hopefully you make it to the end of the video for the watch time. Watch, like, share, comment, interact on this video and all my videos for the all gay rhythm. Now, yesterday I got the opportunity to see a movie called Beekeeper starring Jason Statham. I've never heard of the movie before I got the invite. Didn't see a trailer. Didn't even know the movie was coming out. Didn't know what the movie was even about. But I figured Jason Statham is going to be an action movie. And so, yeah, let's talk about the first new movie I've seen in 2024. So, the synopsis for Beekeeper reads, One man's brutal campaign for vengeance takes on national stakes after it's revealed he's a former operative of a powerful and clandestine organization known as the Beekeepers. And this movie is directed by David Ayer, who did the original Suicide Squad movie. He did Fury. He did End of Watch. Um... What else has he done? He did the Will Smith movie that was on Netflix that I didn't really care for that much called Bright. And I'm going to shock everybody when I say this, but he also did the Denzel Washington movie Training Day, which I've never seen. But yeah, I was a little late to the screener, so I missed like maybe the first 10 to 15 minutes of the movie, but I still saw the majority of the movie. And the movie is about an hour and 45 minutes, and I had a lot of fun watching this movie. Now, with that said, as I was watching this movie, I was definitely like... Oh, yeah, this is them trying to do or give Jason Statham his version of John Wick. This is David Ayer trying to create his John Wick franchise because there were a lot of callbacks and moments and things from John Wick that they put into this movie. Like, for example, and I guess spoilers for John Wick, but John Wick, the first one came out years ago. And I absolutely love the John Wick franchise. As a matter of fact, John Wick 4 is one of my favorite movies to come out of 2023. I loved John Wick number four. But when you think about the first John Wick movie, uh, where the gangster or the guy from uh, Game of Thrones, he basically attacked John Wick and killed his dog and the other, his father or his uncle, whoever that guy was, he was willing to defend his, his, his family member until he found out that the person he pissed off was John Wick. And... He was, remember, remember he called John Leguizamo's character. He was like, why did you put your, why did you punch my son? Do you know who I am? And he was like, sir, he stole John Wick's car. And he was like, oh. <laughs> and they kind of did the same thing in this movie where it was just like, who did you mess with? And they found out that the guy was a beekeeper. Jason Statham was a beekeeper. And they're like, oh, you kind of basically done fucked up. And so there were a lot of moments like that in this movie where I was just like, oh, so they're definitely trying to do another John Wick. But with that said, like I said, I had a lot of fun with this movie. Like, this is an action movie. Like, you're not expecting it to be completely perfect or for the storyline to be, you know, groundbreaking or super intriguing like The Winter Soldier. But I will say, like, for the most part, because it's not just the action that was incredible. And I will say, like, the action was great. Like, the fight scenes and everything. I will say, like, some of the editing in the movie felt a little janky at certain points. Uh, but overall, like the kills in this movie were brutal. I always say, you know, blood, sex, gore, magic. Obviously, there's no magic, and there wasn't really any sex. But the blood and gore, I wouldn't even, actually know. And I think about it, there wasn't a whole lot of blood and gore. There was a lot of blood, but 
there wasn't a lot of gore, but it was still very brutal. Like the kills were brutal. Like Jason Statham's character was on a ruthless rampage of revenge. Uh, you know, because his whole motto was about protecting the elderly, even though Jason Statham is not that young. It would probably have played better if it was a younger person because he was on a crusade of going against this uh, this organ this corrupt organization that was scamming elderly folks out of their retirement savings and out of their money. And so the inciting incident was Felicia Rashad killing herself, unaliving herself, because this company scammed her out of basically $2 million. And so because of that, all her money was gone. She ended up killing herself. And so now Jason Statham, who knew Felicia Rashad's character, he rented her cat, he rented uh, her lodge or whatever. This is the part of the movie that I missed, but he rent he was renting from her, so he knew her, and he treat she treated him well. And so because of that, he went on he went on a revenge rampage because he found out that she wasn't the only one that they were scamming, and so he basically wanted to be the 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 golden the white knight for the elderly. So. In terms of that, just like John Wick, it was a very simple premise where John Wick just wanted to get revenge because they killed his dog. And same thing. This man wanted revenge because they ended up being responsible for the death of someone he knew personally. And so even though the premise was very simple, you could definitely still feel that there was a lore around this world with the whole idea of the beekeepers, this clandestine organization. However, I will say that I don't feel like the lore... Filled, filled as fleshed out as John Wick with the whole Continental and this whole group of assassins. Like, even with the first movie, you didn't really get much from these other characters and the Continental, but you still felt like it was a world. And not to say that you didn't feel like that in this movie, but I, I didn't feel it as much in this movie as I did with John Wick. Like, even though, like, you talk about beekeepers, obviously he's not the only beekeeper. I feel like they also built up other characters and talked about other characters only for it to not really... Uh, manifest or really uh, what what's the word that I'm trying to use? It didn't really it didn't really go anywhere. Like they they talked about another character only for them to like introduce the character and then get rid of them two seconds later. So I was just like, oh well, that kind of went nowhere. But yeah, I'll tell you, I don't know. There's not much to say about this movie. I just thought it was a fun action movie. Of course, you know Jason Statham. Even when it comes to like his acting, like he's never really been a great actor. Like even when I think of like Keanu Reeves, never been a great actor, but they could definitely pull off. What they're casting, I feel like they are able to pull it off. And him being cast in this role, I, I had fun. I would totally watch a sequel. And then also, surprisingly enough, Josh Hutcherson, Peter, was in this movie from Hunger Games. And he was the main, he was basically the main villain. And seeing him play like a douchey tech bro, it was fun. It was something, it was a role that I've never seen him in before. It seemed like he had a lot of fun in this role and in this movie. And I would like to see him, you know play more douchey douchey guys cuz you know it was it was it was fun and like even though the story wasn't all of the, all that good the there was definitely like a twist and moments that made me go like oh my god like oh snap like how 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 is this going to happen like what how is he going to go after this person now that we know what we know i'm not going obviously i'm not going to say spoilers but like but there were definitely moments that still, even though the story wasn't like very good, it still had me invested. And I had fun overall and not just the action, but just the way the action was transpiring. But of course, obviously with it being an action movie and with Jason Statham almost being in his 60s and being this basically one man army in terms of like a whole bunch of people, of course you had to suspend your disbelief with certain things. It's just like, there's no way, there's no way this man is doing all of this, doing all of these things, but it was fun. You know, for the first movie that I've seen in 2024, I got to say, like, Beekeepers, I would watch it again. I would watch it again. I would watch it again, and I would like to see a sequel for Beekeepers. But it's definitely not John Wick, as much as they try to make it. I would take, if I, if I had to say who would win in a fight... Jason Statham's beekeeper or John Wick, I'm saying John Wick is winning. <laughs> but with that said, if you guys, well, actually, no, you haven't seen Beekeepers yet because it's not out yet. It actually comes out this weekend. But with that said, when you guys do see Beekeepers, let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. It was a fun movie. I would recommend going to watch it in the theater, especially since, you know, it's nothing, there's nothing else out right now. I mean, I know Night Swim is out. I haven't seen Night Swim, so I can't, 
I can't compare. Like, if you say, oh, go see this or go see Night Swim, I don't know. But I heard from other people saying that it wasn't that good. So based on that, I would say if you had to choose, go see Beekeepers over Night Swim. But who knows? There are some people that might have liked Night Swim. But with that said, I enjoyed Beekeepers. I had a lot of fun. I would totally recommend it. So once you see Beekeepers, come back to this video. Let me know all of your thoughts about Beekeepers. Did you even know Beekeepers is going to be a thing? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you a fan of the John Wick franchise? What did you think about John Wick 4? Even though this isn't a John Wick review, since I brought it up, let me know your thoughts about John Wick 2. All of that for the algorithm. Let's feed the algorithm. Watch, like, share, comment, interact for the all gay rhythm. This one, your first time checking out one of my videos, please check out the other videos on my channel. If you like what you see, please subscribe for more and hit that bell notification button so you're alerted every single time I post a new video and tell your friends, families, and neighbors about my channel to help me continue to grow. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.